people were evil and they certainly left their terrifying mark on history. Here is part two of the top 10 evil convicts from history only 1% of people know about. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have John George High. John George High, commonly referred to as the acid bath killer, was an infamous English serial killer who operated in the 1940s. His gruesome crimes shocked the nation and earned him a chilling reputation for his method of disposing of the victims' bodies, which involved dissolving them in sulfuric acid. His victims included both men and women whom he targeted for their money and possessions. High would befriend his victims, gaining their trust before luring them to his place of work, a warehouse located in Crawley, West Sussex. High believed that if there were no physical remains, the police would have no evidence of his crimes. However, his assumption proved to be flawed. What a shocker. Police investigators found that while the acid effectively destroyed most of the victims' bodies, certain remains such as dentures, bone fragments, and other non-organic materials were resistant to the corrosive effects. Eventually, High's crimes caught up with him. In 1949, he was arrested for the killing of a wealthy man named Archibald Henderson, whose disappearance had raised suspicions. During his interrogation, High confessed not only to killing Henderson, but also several other individuals. At his trial, High's sanity became a significant point of contention. He claimed that he was driven by a compulsion to drink human blood and that he believed he could turn his victims' bodies into sludge, allowing him to absorb their wealth. Despite these claims, the court found High guilty and he was sentenced to death. On August 10, 1949, John George High was executed by hanging at Wandsworth Prison in London. In our number 9 spot today, we have Martha Beck and Raymond Fernandez. Martha Beck and Raymond Fernandez, notorious as the Lonely Hearts Killers, were a criminal couple who operated in the late 1940s. Using various aliases and personas, Fernandez would respond to Lonely Hearts ads placed by women seeking love or companionship. He would pose as a charming, attractive man, enticing these women into romantic relationships. Beck, playing the role of Fernandez's sister or relative, would eventually join the relationship, gaining the trust of the victims. Once the couple had gained the woman's trust and manipulated them emotionally, they would proceed to rob them of their money, possessions, and even their personal savings. In some cases, the victims' bank accounts would be emptied and their properties sold off. As their greed and desperation increased, the couple turned to killing in order to eliminate any potential witnesses who could expose their criminal activities. Their crimes eventually caught up with them when they targeted a widow named Janet Fay in 1949. Fay's sister became suspicious of Fernandez's intentions and alerted the authorities. The couple was apprehended in Michigan and extradited to New York for trial. During the trial, Martha Beck and Raymond Fernandez confessed to multiple crimes. Both Beck and Fernandez were found guilty and sentenced to death. On March 8, 1951, Martha Beck was executed in the electric chair at Sing Sing Correctional Facility. Raymond Fernandez met the same fate on the same day. In our number 8 spot today, we have Charles Sabraj. Infamously known as the Bikini Killer or the Serpent, was a serial killer active during the 1970s who targeted and preyed upon Western tourists traveling through South Asia. He would approach them, often posing as a gem dealer or an official guy guiding them through the region. Once he had gained their trust, he would employ various methods to incapacitate and then take the life of his victims. These methods included poisoning, using intoxicating substances, and sometimes even more violent physical methods. He would then rob them of their belongings, including money, passports, and any valuable possessions. Despite being arrested multiple times, he demonstrated remarkable skills in manipulating the legal systems of various countries. He often managed to escape from custody either through bribery, forging documents, or exploiting legal loopholes. However, his luck eventually ran out. In 1976, while attempting to poison a group of French students in New Delhi, he was arrested by authorities. In 1977, he was convicted and sentenced to life imprisonment in India. Over the years, he faced additional legal troubles in countries like Thailand and Nepal, which further extended his time behind bars. In our number 7 spot today, we have Gary Heidnick. This is a name you might be more familiar with than some of the others on this list, and that is because this is the man who inspired the character of Buffalo Bill in the infamous novel Silence of the Lambs. If you're familiar with the literature, you'll know that that's absolutely not a good sign. Gary Heidnick was an American serial killer who committed heinous crimes in the late 1980s. Heidnick kidnapped and tormented six women, imprisoning them in his home. He would lure them into his home under false pretenses, offering food, shelter, or something else that they needed or wanted. Once inside, he subjected them to unimaginable horrors, imprisoning them in a pit dug in the basement of his house which was later named the Pit of Horrors. Of course, I cannot detail much more of his crimes in order to stay within the guidelines of YouTube, but it's safe to say it was absolutely horrendous. 
Tragically, two of Heidnick's victims did not survive the ordeal. The remains of Deborah Dudley and Sandra Lindsay were discovered in Heidnick's basement, leading to his arrest in March 1987. The remaining four women were rescued and provided critical testimony against him. During his trial, Heidnick's disturbing and psychopathic behavior became very apparent. He displayed no remorse for his actions and even attempted to act as his own attorney. His behavior and erratic courtroom antics added to the shock and horror surrounding the case. Ultimately, he was found guilty of multiple counts of killing and many other charges as well. He was sentenced to death and spent several years on death row while his case went through numerous appeals. On July 6, 1999, Gary Heidnick was executed by lethal injection at the State Correctional Institute in Rockview, Pennsylvania. In our number six spot today, we have Yang Xinhai. Yang, no, also known as the monster killer, was one of the most prolific serial killers in China's history. Active from 1999 to 2003, he terrorized multiple provinces by taking the lives of his victims, often targeting entire families. Yang's heinous crimes shocked the nation and left a lasting impact on Chinese society. In 1988, at the age of 20, Yang embarked on his life of crime. He was arrested and imprisoned for a series of burglaries, spending time in a labor camp. Following his release in 1999, he began a spree of violence that would terrify communities throughout China. Yang's MO involved breaking into houses during the night, often in rural areas where security was relatively lax. He would then kill the occupants and he showed no mercy or remorse. The brutality and frequency of Yang's crimes were unprecedented in China. He showed a complete disregard for human life, often leaving behind scenes of extreme violence and horror. Despite the high number of killings, Yang managed to evade capture for several years. However, in November 2003, Yang's killing spree came to an end. During a routine police inspection, he was caught in the act of committing a burglary. When questioned by the police, Yang confessed. During his trial, he showed no remorse for his actions and appeared detached from the gravity of his crimes. He was found guilty and in February 2004, Yang was sentenced to death and executed soon after. In our number 5 spot today, we have Pedro Rodriguez Filho. Also known as the Padrino Matador, he is a Brazilian serial killer who is believed to have killed over 70 people, mostly other criminals, in the 1960s and 1970s. Pedro had a difficult childhood as his father was a notorious criminal who actually really sadly harmed and killed his mother. This of course had a profound influence on Pedro and his life. This experience is believed to have contributed to his violent behavior later on. Pedro began his crime spree at a super young age and he started with a horrific crime when he killed the vice mayor of his town who he believed was responsible for the death of his girlfriend. He continued to kill other criminals, often targeting those who had previously wronged him or his family. Pedro was arrested in 1973 and was eventually convicted of killing 71 people. Although he was sentenced to 400 years, there was a maximum time of 30 years which Pedro served before being released in 2007. Pedro himself passed away earlier this year in March after being killed by two still unknown suspects. In our number 4 spot today, we have Carl Panzram. Carl Panzram was a notorious criminal and serial killer who committed a wide range of heinous acts during the early 20th century. In his own written account, Panzram claimed responsibility for 21 killings and thousands of burglaries. Throughout his criminal career, he traveled extensively, committing a slew of violent crimes along the way. This geographical dispersion made it difficult for law enforcement to connect his crimes and build a comprehensive profile of his actions. He targeted individuals who he perceived as easy victims, often taking advantage of their vulnerability or luring them into isolated areas. In 1928, Panzeram was apprehended and arrested for burglary. While in prison, he authored an autobiography in which he provided a chilling, first-hand account of his crimes and his deeply antisocial mindset. Panzeram's writings offered a disturbing glimpse into the mind of a remorseless and violent individual. On September 5, 1930, Panzeram was executed by hanging at Leavenworth Federal Penitentiary in Kansas. His execution marked the end of his violent reign, but his written confessions and personal accounts continue to fascinate and disturb those interested in the psychology of criminal behavior. In our number three spot today, we have Stephen Richards. Stephen Richards, also known by his alias Captain Moonlight, is a notorious figure in Australian criminal history. Before adopting his criminal persona, Richards pursued a career as a lay preacher in the Anglican Church. However, his actions were not in line with his religious calling. He engaged in fraudulent activities, including embezzlement and insurance scams, which led to his imprisonment in 1869. During his time in prison, Richards met another criminal named Jesse Nesbitt, and together they formed a bond. Upon their release, 
release in 1874, Richards and Nesbitt began leading a gang that engaged in robberies and confrontations with law enforcement. Richards adopted the moniker Captain Moonlight as his alias, and his charismatic personality garnered attention from both the public and the media. He cultivated an image of a romanticized outlaw, drawing inspiration from the legends of American Old West figures like Jesse James and Ned Kelly. In 1879, the gang attempted to rob a bank in New South Wales, resulting in a violent shootout. Several members of the gang, including Nesbitt, were killed and Richards was captured along with the remaining members. Following their capture, Richards and his surviving gang members were put on trial for killing. The prosecution argued that Richards had ordered the shooting of a police officer during the failed bank robbery. Despite his claims of innocence, Richards was convicted and sentenced to death by hanging. In the early morning hours of January 20th, 1880, Stephen Richards met his fate on the gallows at Darlinghurst Goal in Sydney. In our number two spot today, we have Thomas Neil Cream. What a horrible name. So bad. Thomas Cream, dubbed the Lambeth Poisoner, was a Scottish-Canadian doctor who gained notoriety for his terrifying activities during the late 19th century. Cream's preferred method of killing was poisoning, and he targeted his victims, particularly women with whom he had been romantically involved. His crime spree started to crumble after the death of a woman named Matilda Clover, who had been his lover. Suspicion arose regarding her sudden demise, and an investigation was launched, and evidence pointed pointed toward Cream's involvement. However, lacking concrete proof, authorities were unable to bring charges against him. Cream, undeterred, continued his killing spree, but his luck would soon run out. In 1892, Cream's crimes were exposed when he implicated himself in a series of poisonings in a bid to frame others for the killings. His actions drew attention, leading to his arrest and subsequent trial. During the trial, Cream made several erratic outbursts, including accusing others of being the true culprits, but to no avail. In October 1892, Thomas Neal Cream was found guilty and sentenced to death by hanging. On November 15th, 1892, he met his fate at Newgate Prison in London. In our number one spot today, we have Andre Chikatilo. Andre, infamously known as the Butcher of Rostov, was a Soviet serial killer who terrorized Russia for over a decade. Operating between 1978 and 1990, Chikatilo was responsible for taking the lives of at least 53 people, predominantly young and vulnerable individuals. His MO typically involved approaching his victims under the pretense of offering assistance, promising them employment, or personal favors. Once he gained their trust, he would then lead them to a secluded location where the horrors would take place. In 1990, his crimes were finally brought to an end. A series of coincidences and the persistence of an investigator named Viktor Burakov led to his identification and subsequent arrest. Despite his initial denial of the crimes, DNA evidence eventually linked him to them, leading to his confession. During his trial in 1992, he was found guilty of 53 killings, although he later claimed to have killed more than 100 victims. Chikatilo was sentenced to death and executed on February 14th, 1994. Alright guys, that has been our list for today. Thanks so much for checking it out. I've been your host today, Olivia Kozlovsky, and I will see you again soon. Bye! Which I really appreciate it. See you in a bit. No, leave it open. It sounds good. <laughs> All right, we've got Taylor behind the camera today, so if you feel a different energy, that's why. <laughs> At Sing Sing Correctional Facility in Ozingen, Ozenen? What the f***? Uh, Charles, infamously known as the Beacon, what the f***? <clears throat> God, this is long. I need a drink so bad. <laughs> Woohoo! All right. <clears throat> In 1892, Cream's crimes, <laughs> that got me. <laughs>